Hello and welcome. I've gone extra big on it because it's the last one of the year. This is officially the last just ride of 2023. It's so special, we haven't even got a guest. It's just me and you, Elliot. Rob Warner, Elliot Jackson, it's us two. I can't wait. This is going to be amazing. Should be all right, shouldn't it? Yeah. So just to give everyone, we've had a lot of guests, just to give everyone a little bit of context. Rob and I come from downhill mountain biking. We both had a decent, decently long careers, decently good. Rob, maybe a little bit. It dragged on I... at least a decade <laughs> past, its, past its sell by date. But don't worry about it. I got paid. We're gonna get. We're gonna get into everything. You're gonna hear all about our careers in downhill mountain biking, our careers as Red Bull TV commentators, hosts. And um, this should be great. We've had this amazing run of 11 episodes of this podcast. I'm so glad that we got to do it together. Had to twist your arm a little bit, but um, it's been super fun. Uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> in the greatest frame of mind <laughs> at the start of the series, shall we say. But listen, a lot of people, you know, we've only really fired questions off to our guests here. Why don't you tell people who I am and I tell people who you are? Okay, you going first? No. I want you to set the template. Okay. I need to know. I need all to right. Yeah, do all this. right. How do I do this? I need to pick this up. Welcome, everyone. We've got Rob Warner, Sir Rob Warner. Lord. Oh, sorry. Lord Rob Warner. He is a World Cup downhill winner. He is one of the best British athletes <laughs> of his era. And then, um, <laughs> pushing it. <laughs> he was a downhill mountain bike racer. He's got. He's been on the podium. I, I'll, I don't. I won't tell you what his best result is. I'm sure he'll tell you about that later. But he's also the voice of mountain biking. He also, you know him in your ears from Freecaster, from his viral videos of commentary. You know him from Red Bull TV. You know him from X Fighters. You know him from Hardline. Mm. This, we have Rob Warner. He's, uh, oh he is going to be the guest on the show. That was strong. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to, how am I going to match that? Huh? Oh my God. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> So, Joy, I'm going to try and do it in the same way. I'm joined by Elliot Jackson all the way from Los Angeles, pretty much. True. One of the America's better, <laughs> top even, schoolboy motocross riders. Oh, yeah. Got cool. himself a ride on Team Green and then moved into mountain biking and had a decent career. <laughs> Didn't win a World Cup. Did you get on a podium? Okay, what move was... on. Move and, on. And then <laughs> and ended up we ended up commentating together. And that's the best bit because Elliot actually is an amazing co-commentator. You're a genius to have alongside, mate. The minute you told me that you taught yourself how to code, I was like, I can't fail here. <laughs> so boom, we're off and we've had we I love working with you, mate. I love working. Likewise. With you. And, that, likewise. and that is all I need to say. Yeah, it's actually, true. I, you're uh, an amazing at what you do, and thank you for making my life so much easier. No worries. I will carry you on my back. Now you're going to make it much harder, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to ask me something. Okay. Questions. Okay. So the first question I have for you is Do you remember where we met? Yeah. Go on. You were riding for Yeti. Okay. Damien was your mechanic, team manager, but yeah. Team manager. And he had a brilliant idea that I didn't run with. Oh, do you remember? God. Do you remember? You told me this story. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. I don't even know if we can so, uh, so... recall it here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, so it that's was... when I first met you. So what year would that have been? Yeah, so it was two thousand. Well, yeah, maybe twelve. No way. Yeah, that was the right time. So I was I was racing World Cup downhill World Cups. You were commentating. I had qualified really well, and that's right. Um, that's right. Which race was it? Do you know? Mount Saint Anne. Yeah. Never. And so like it was a big deal for me because um you being the good commentator you are, you would go around and get some info or whatever. And I saw Rob Warner coming up. He's coming to talk to me. And I was like, what's this? <laughs> what's this guy coming up He's to talk to me. Top 20, no, I better what? find some yeah, shit yeah, out yeah. on Elliot. He's like, uh, hey. Um <laughs> Yeah, how how was how was the run? Yeah, all good. Um yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What? I can't remember. I can't remember the info you got, but I remember just being like, 
okay, I better do good because Rob Warner is going to come <laughs> and take my run and everything. But it is, it's, it is funny. Like, at what point did you realize that you needed to start like getting info like that? Because now that I'm commentating, like now that I'm commentating and and we're commentating together, you've been like this amazing mentor to me. And like oh, I kind of yeah, it's it's true. But I I kind of just like picked up stuff like that. But, well, and, and in, you know, I started as an expert, if you like, rather yeah. than being the host on x Files, And I learned most of my trade off Ed Lee. Right. So you do. I mean, it's part of the job, right? You're working closely with someone. You, you Yeah, you do You do kind of learn as you go. It's cool, isn't it? Do you remember, um, like, worst moment of commentary? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to bring it up here. Though. <laughs> oh, really? It was quite bad. I okay. Let's just say... But years ago, I was very late for a commentary on the freecaster days, as I would be, yeah. as I normally yeah, am, uh-huh. as as you know, as 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 it is. And we were pretty loose in those days. And I was hungover, and I was walking towards the commentary box. And it was a long time ago because a long time ago, we've got that. But it was a while ago. It was a while ago. <laughs> and as I was walking in, Danny Hart's dad, Paul Hart. Uh-huh. A mate of mine. Yeah, hey, Danny, Danny Hart, world champion, downhill exactly. racer. Exactly, the man who dude. smashed Sean Prix in 2011. By, yeah. Was it 12 seconds? The greatest world championship run of all time. Okay, wait, wait, we have to take a little tangent there because that run, Danny Hart's uh, Sean Prix run 2011, like, went viral. That might be the greatest commentary moment. <laughs> <laughs> but as you said, it, it definitely isn't the greatest commentary moment. But at that point in time, yeah. it was... I mean, me and Nigel were drunk, <laughs> very drunk, and we in that in that part in that time that commentary almost did fit that yeah. race run. Well, if I'm honest, it's, when you listen to it now, it's actually insane. Well, I think it it it, it kind of holds up because um, you wouldn't have understood from the outside how gnarly that run was. That's right. If you guys hadn't was it wasn't just going wild, yeah. right? Like it, it wasn't a run that you would be like. Oh, and Danny Hart, he slips on a route or something. No, like that's that. right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know if we had to get into it quite as much as we did. <laughs> but when it wasn't 12, I think it was eight. I think 12 was Kvarik actually in, in, in Fort William, or it might have even been more 14. Yeah, or something. But yeah, I yeah. think it was eight. Anyway, it was, we, we had this, we lit the run up with our commentary as we did. And afterwards, I delivered the, I would say, the greatest line I've ever delivered for, for timing. And I said, he just won't work, become world champion by eight seconds. And I and there was a bit of a pause and I said, how does Danny Hart sit down with balls that big? <laughs> and the best bit about that was because that comment also went viral and I got a mention on Twitter from Lance Armstrong. No way. Saying, has anyone heard no this commentator? Way. And he quoted that line. Actually, yeah, Lance Armstrong did. Wow. That's I had so no sick. Idea. Yeah, actually. Well, the funny one, it just happened uh, a little bit ago. There's these two brothers who do these like voiceovers for comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did, they reenacted your run. That's Chef's right. Mates or something. Chef's Mates. That's yeah. right. I think they're Australian. I've never, yeah, 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 yeah. They do a lot. But I follow them. And, and they do like all these amazing like commentary like moments in history like yeah that's football, right basketball, so it's an honor like, like it's cool to get mountain to, for them to find yeah. that mountain biking clip again amongst all the mainstream sports it must have gone pretty big eh? yeah yeah yeah. and they did a sure. brilliant job with it yeah so what's your i mean you, you didn't you weren't part of freecaster and and you came in a bit later with red bull but we've done a lot of commentaries yeah. together very good commentaries together what what would be your any stand out to you yeah so like best and worst moment i guess so far um the well even the first the first moment i look back and i'm like oh bless my heart because it was lords and no 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 sorry leger leger 21 um and i had gotten the call up i'd done a couple of crankworks commentary so is crankworks downhill or like mountain bike festival and it's big but it's not world cup big yeah um and so i was like yeah i think i've got this i came i you know i i've ridden there i was like all good talk to everyone walk the track and i was like oh no no stress and i remember you were like uh you want to do a little bit of practice in qualifying and i was like <laughs> I don't know why. But <laughs> man, I guess, you know. And so we start doing commentary. And 
you started off, you like you had told me about like, okay, this is the roles, like here's what's gonna happen or whatever. And I remember like it felt like to me, somebody came out of the starting line. I was like, <laughs> oh, here they go. Um, they little jump. And they've crossed the finish line. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what to talk about. Like, <laughs> you really? Yeah. Like, because I hadn't done any prep. Right. Like, like, I had, I knew my stuff, right? But I, there is, there's such a skill level to it. Like, there's a like, process to it. Totally. There's a process. To like, it. I, I've kind of developed this idea that, um, I feel like as an expert, you're like the director of attention. And so I'm really like trying to direct the the audience's attention. Like, what are you supposed to be looking at in this moment? That's right. And I I wasn't doing like I just thought that you came in and you just talked about stuff, you know. Other teams do do it that way. Yeah. I try. We I like ours to be a bit better. Than <laughs> yeah. I like ours. I don't want to be reacting. I like to go in there with a massive knowledge base. Yeah. I put you know I. I mean, the World Cup required more well, more prep than anything else because there's such so many riders with yeah. so much history. Right. But to miss that out is a, to me was well a crime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I always took care, really took care of the prep. I would say. And, yeah. And I'm pretty pleased the way I did prepare for commentary. Oh, you know? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I definitely took that from you. I think the two the two like standout moments was one of them was. Greg Menard's run at World Championships when he won. Yeah. Been oh, months. in Val de Sole. Yeah, 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 yeah. The last one of the... Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... You probably didn't do the others with me, right? No. No, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Excuse that me. One was, that one was... I, I just, ridiculous. It was ridiculous. <laughs> What's he doing? I don't at know. At that age, winning on no, that track. You can't. Or any track. No. I mean... And, and it was, I, it was it like... Was ludicrous. It, it, felt, uh, it felt good because we were just so biased. Like we were just super biased about it, and it and it yeah. felt good. And so that one was that one was really nice. And um, also seeing Finn Isles win was really nice. To win in Canada, that was amazing, wasn't it? You know, to uh, Finn as a Canadian, yeah, to win his first World Cup at Mont Saint Anne, the legacy of Stevie Smith there. You know, the the famous, the man who really. It really laid the path for all the other Canadian downhillers to follow, and we lost him in 2016. You know, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, it was, it was that was a really emotional commentary, and it came at the end of our World Cup commentaries as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it did yeah. It, it. I was glad. Do you know what? I went so hard on that downhill in Mont Saint Anne last yeah. year on the last year, and I put everything in that the next day is the only time I've never. I really feel like I didn't do my job. I was so spent and probably a bit depressed actually because the World <laughs> Cups were running out fast. That I had nothing to say, and I, I yeah. did a really. I, I'll admit that I was not happy with my work. Right. At the Mont yeah. Saint World Cup cross country last year. I was. I just. Yeah, I battled. I really yeah. battled. Yeah, but but we went mad the day before. So. We did. Yeah, yeah. So okay, zooming out, we could talk about commentary forever. Yeah, we can. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did. Um, what about bikes? Like the the thing I've always wondered is like, what was Rob Warner like as a early racer? What was what? like the diamond in a rough Rob Warner like? And because tell me, just give me a little bit of, a little bit of history, like your getting into the World Cups and st and stuff like that, like you becoming a pro rider. Yeah, I can remember it well. I mean, I started briefly. I was did motorcycle trials from the age of four years old, or rode motorcycles from the age of four and bicycles and what have you. And I had track bicycles and BMXs, but I never competed at BMX. I used to literally mess about in the pits behind my house. And just like on trackers and scrap bikes and motorcycle trials was my main goal. And I rode in motorcycle trials, you know, at national level from the age of eight. Then mountain bikings came along and I remember getting my first one at the age of 14. I was at secondary school and me and my mate decided to ride the Ridgeway for charity 85 miles. It took us like six on days. On a mountain bike. They weren't even mounted. The early <laughs> mountain bikes, it was muddy. We walked. We had these crap ever ready lights. We couldn't see what we were doing because it was dark at four. Miles. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it took us like days and days. Dad had to come and get us every night and then drive us back to the same spot the next. It was for charity, man. We hey, couldn't just, cheat. Just drive us a little bit further. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And then like that was so that was my taste of mountain biking. Yeah. And then and then toward that was eighty four. I was fourteen. And then. You know, 89, I think I raced at Bicycle Expo. I started to do a few mountain bike races. I was still so involved in motorcycle trials. It was my uh -huh. life. I was on the bike three or four hours a day. I'd given up 
well, I didn't really do much at school. College was, just, I got kicked out. So that only left me to ride my motorbike all day, every day. And then I got into mountain biking and I beat Hans Ray at a bicycle expo. And I beat Jason McCroy in the Wait, ice race up who there. Who are these dudes? Yeah, well, Jason McCroy was... I know Hans Ray. He was, he was a legend. And also, still tri is. a trials That's rider. That's right. And, and right, then... yeah, and he raced slalom and he was big, he was a yeah. big, big, one of the biggest names in mountain yeah. biking. And then yeah, Jason McCroy, yeah. unfortunately, we also lost. One of my best friends uh -huh. who... Who you know? Me and Pete, he came up under the under behind Jason. He was the one at the races first. Him and his dad travelled all those World Cups, and I used to watch him on Eurosport. And that is actually why I was like, this downhill mountain biking looks really? quite good. But yeah. huh. I remember watching him in a race in Norway or something, and thinking, yeah. I need a piece of that. Really? So I went to Worlds in ninety. I went to Nationals in ninety three because I needed to qualify for the World Championships right. at Malvin's. I clipped in. Yeah. It was a disaster. I couldn't go around the corners, but I still got ninth. I lied to the team manager. It was a bit easier. Then I told him I was a top flight BMX racer. <laughs> you never One of the best. BMX. Never gone near a BMX oh my in my life God. racing it. And, um, and it was because we knew that Meta BA had a big BMX jump section. Oh, you did BMX, did you? Tim Flukes it was. I said, yeah, bloody good, mate. He goes, all right, we'll try you. So that was it. Me and Pete I Tompkins wish. drove out there. Chain came off on the first turn. I, st I and I rolled down, but I went I went hard as as I could without pedaling, and ended up nineteenth, which wasn't that good. Except John Tomac was twentieth, so oh, yeah. And I think I might have been. I was one of the top Brit finishers. I don't know. That's not but bad. P was out. He'd smashed his knee. It was his first Worlds as well. He cut his knee open, so he was out. And um, yeah, and that was good enough to get me a ride on MBUK in nineteen ninety four. I had a budget of four thousand pound, and that was for you to buy all your flights. That's and, it. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. gave me a GT RTS, I believe I had, and yeah. then an LTS. I had nice bikes, oh, yeah. and I went. I went to in ninety four. I went to Cap Die qualified ninth, got a puncher. That was my first World Cup. Missed Germany because I crashed in practice and damaged my shoulder, and then went to to Mont Saint Anne, the fabled, yeah. legendary Mont Saint yeah. Anne. Yeah. It was raining. I got up late. Didn't do a practice run. And then I just, I just went up. I had breakfast in the chairlift on the way up, a Mars bar. And, but this bloke afterwards was trying to tell me it was this trainer bloke was like, I need to train you. And I was like, why? And he was like, what you did there on a Mars bar, you know, this, and, I was like, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. I was surprised. <laughs> he was just like, he was yeah, like, oh, I, I, good, I, I, good I, energy, all sugar. And I was like, whatever, mate. But I got third and then, and then kind of it took off from there, you know, so. It took off from there. Yeah, it did a bit. Yeah. Man, that is, <laughs> so what, like, what were you thinking when you like, you show up to the most professional race series in the world in mountain biking and you're like, ah, don't really want to set an alarm. Like, like, wouldn't set an alarm. <laughs> I won't set an alarm now. <laughs> but like, like, did you ever think maybe I'm sure people had this because we've talked about this. Like, I'm sure people were like, oh, Rob. Like that trainer, Rob, if you just set an alarm, if you just eat yeah. some breakfast. Yeah, but you see, it was wet and muddy. And I, I knew that I couldn't be bothered to do a practice run and, or, and clean up and what have you. So that was <laughs> it. I just went, I went in hot. <laughs> but yeah, I was at a, you know, the, it was, I didn't have a mechanic. I didn't have any spares. The bike was wrecked by this point. Remember, I had one. Me and the bike probably only had one run in us. Really, I mean, it was fun. It was, it was different to what it is now. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was, yeah. was nineteen ninety three. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was yeah. literally what, two decades. Do ago. you remember like your favorite moment from that era, like getting into a rough, like? Uh, yeah, I mean, the best thing about that era without a doubt, was Sean Palmer getting into mountain biking. And because I knew, so it's funny, I had no idea that Sean Palmer was a mountain biker. I knew him from watching the X Games. Like, he won border cross gold medal. Oh. He was, he qualified for a supercross. But the, even, but that actually came after oh, his mountain really? bike career, I believe. Uh, Before that, he was one of the world's boss, biggest snowboarders. First time I went snowboarding in 96, I remember no 86 i was 86 okay and i went in a snowboard shop in it in, in, in austria and he had the in the bloke i remember going to i didn't have any gear i turned up i needed a board trousers everything <laughs> and on the video on the in the shop they had the innsbruck big air competition which was a massive yeah okay. massive competition and they this bloke was like have you seen this he goes watch this and it was palmer and he unclipped his back foot 
I remember. And he took off, you, and then he did like, I don't know, whatever yeah, it was. Sure. And, the, and one uh -huh. leg's out, not uh -huh. even clipped in the board, and he put his back foot on and landed it. And then, of course, it was him on the podium. Yeah. Topless, <laughs> across his belly, the yeah, board above right. his head. And then he came a mountain oh bike, and we were hanging out with him. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and those were the up. best years so was that really, of my life. did you did you meet him early so he, he first his first race was Panicosa in spain and i reckon it was it was probably 95 because pete got second and didn't steve pete come second yep but i remember that he didn't do his helmet up <laughs> so <laughs> that, all the videos he's just he's just Dave, facing a well guys, with his helmet i under. feel like every story i hear like in what world <laughs> <laughs> So, so he was big news instantly, Pete, after his second, and everyone talking about him not doing his helmet up for his race. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he got to know Palm, actually. They went out drinking that night, and I got to know Palm later that year in Cairns, Australia, at the yeah. World Championships, and I hung out. And then, you know, and then we all, the, the group grew yeah, after that, that Randy were, Lawrence. Yeah, you know, and, all and it's funny because you guys all, like, you know, Steve Pete went on to be one of the greatest of all time, yeah. 17 World Cup yeah. wins. Yeah, third, third greatest World Cup racer of all time, most successful after Gwyn and Minot. Yeah, and then yeah, like Randy Lawrence. I knew Randy Lawrence from Jeremy McGrath, the Supercross riders, mechanics. So right through him, I got to meet Jeremy McGrath, which, let's be honest, beats anything <laughs> in life hands down. Yeah, that is actually true. <laughs> I hung out in Jeremy McGrath's hotel room, just me and him. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I Paris like Supercross. That, I feel like that is some that's going to be. But okay, so. There's too many. There's too many different stories we could tell. But you three, I feel like we're. Um, I mean, you guys were like three musketeers, always together, running wild. Running wild is the word. Yeah, you know, there's there's so many. There's, we did so much stuff together, and honestly, I just don't. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Yeah, that is right. too hot, okay. too hot to handle okay. for a podcast. Like you know, like yeah, most of it was breaking the law or breaking the rules and being. We were bad, but we had a great time doing it. We were, we were mischievous. Say, we yeah. were. We were just naughty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We weren't yeah. bad. It's people. all in the name of fun. Kind yeah. of. <laughs> okay, no, we okay. had a, we had an amazing time. I have I have a question for you because I know you've been. This was the thing that was bolded on the list that you wanted to talk about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, what is it? <laughs> you won a World oh Cup. Oh my god! You I knew it. I knew you were going to bring this. Up. I did. I did. I did. Shall we go into it again? Yeah. Wanna, I, anyone I who hasn't heard this? Yeah, yeah. You got your notes. 1996 Caprone. Like recently, I was. Like, I actually went back there this summer because we were close by to to revisit the bronze statue, but they've taken wait, it down. Wait. What do you mean? So in, in 96, I won it. In 97, apparently, I've never seen it. They erected a massive bronze statue of me. Of you. Of me. Who the, told you that? It's just folklore. <laughs> oh but anyway, it's not there now. Okay. But that okay. day in 96, yeah. Apparently, it was, I was holding an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when you were, like, what did it feel like to stand on top of the podium? Because I feel like... Um... It was a bit It was a bit weird because it rained. Uh, it's the truth of it. Uh, okay. But I still won a World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, 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 the story was like, is that... that, that you know, I was racing all the World Cups, and obviously to win one is the pinnacle of any sport in it. It's as good as you can yep. do. And it was my first year on Giant in 1996, and I hadn't had much of a season. Actually, partly because we didn't even have a downhill bike. I was on a cross-country bike, an ATX 990. Which but then, has way less suspension. It's not not made for the, the sport at all. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I think I did all right on it. I had a 14th yeah. Vincent Anne, and I was pretty happy with that. Anyway, but I was thinking i'm gonna lose my ride here and i'm it wasn't anything but the fact i was having such a good time partying with palmer and drinking and just being a waster really at the races that i knew that that would end if i didn't at least get a result so i was up it was towards the end of the season i was up it against it a bit and in qualifying i did all right i pedaled got down halfway and there was this massive flat section off the end of what was called pinball alley this high speed uh. And, and I came out of there at probably 45 mile an hour and I tucked. And then I went across this flat field before it dropped down at the finish. And the, I didn't know this, but the team manager was there. And obviously, the one rule I had about downhill was I would not pedal. Why should I pedal? It's downhill racing. Okay. Like, what are you on about? <laughs> and back then, it was all pedaling, yeah, right? And this yeah, track yeah. was the most pedally track in the world. <laughs> so I was already defeated, really, before yeah. I started. And he watched me tuck, uh, make myself aerodynamic, yeah. and roll. 
to almost a complete stop. <laughs> yeah. Like I got, thought you were going to say you, no. he had a speed gun. No, it got I got so slow that if I hadn't started pedaling it was even going to be it was going to be a real effort to try and get back up to speed. Like I almost stopped and then I started I was like oh god you better pedal here. So at the bottom, he was like rap. I was like Johan, uh you were uh, you didn't pedal and I was like no nah, I don't I tend not to. <laughs> But you lost, uh, I timed you, you lost around 50 seconds there. Man. 50? Yeah, it was Five a big pedal. Zero. Yeah, the track was seven and a half minutes. <laughs> 50, yeah. So I worked out that I was 50 seconds well, off, normally, off the Normally, just so everyone knows, normally you're going after like tenths. <laughs> no, this is back in the day. <laughs> yeah, you're right, but the tracks weren't seven and a half minutes long then. They were, they're a third of that now. Uh, they really are. They're two, two and a half, aren't they? Three tops. So I looked at the scores and I was like, times, and I was like, Eh, 50 seconds would have put me first. So I was like, if I did actually lose it on the pedal, and this is, I can do this sometimes. In my messed up head, I somehow worked out and kidded myself that I could win. And uh, this is private in my head. I wasn't saying this to anyone. This is me motivating myself, right? right? Okay, yeah, okay, this okay. Is, I see, I 20 see. years later, I feel comfortable enough to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and obviously I hadn't, it was dry at the time. And this and was I went down, And I went down before, pretty uh, early, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went down pretty early. And I, and the truth is, I sprinted everywhere at the top on the far roads. And I've never cornered corners like that. I was coming out of turns and bike was still cranked right over. And I was getting on the pedals because I knew the time. I knew I couldn't pedal down the straights, but I knew if I pedaled out the turns, I could get up to speed and then tuck. And that's what I did. And I no brake the pinball section. And I came out where I'd pedaled, rolled to a stop the day before and I sprinted. I sprinted wow. all the way across oh, the top. Nice. And then I dropped into the finish down and finish area. And it was quite quite a lot of commotion because I'd beat the winning time of the day so far. Yeah. And I'd beaten the qualifying time, right. which was important to me okay. the day before. Yeah. But I was so hurting and out of breath that I was fighting through people, basically having a panic attack, like, because <laughs> 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 my body was not used to it. And I burst out the back and I pedaled down the road. I knew I needed to keep pedaling or I was felt like I was going to have a heart attack. I'd never pedaled that. 20 minutes went by, I went back up there and they were like, you're still in the lead. Then it started raining. No way. <laughs> and I was like, ah, well, this might work out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the job turned out to be a good one and I did win a World Cup. And I would say, in my defence, that I was so upset with everyone saying, we only won because it rained, which was true, that the year after, that winter, I did train. Yeah. It's probably the only winter I actually trained uh -huh. properly. I was livid. I cut the, all the articles where it said it had rained and all the quotes from people I cut out. No, and you I, did not. Yeah, out the magazines, out the magazines. And I took them to the races with me. And before a race run in, two, in 97, I would pull those bits of paper out and it would be like, well, the for, fortunate Rob Warner. And I'd be like, right, I ain't going to be fortunate today. And I'd be, it would light me up. No was, way. Yeah, and Palmer said that he really liked me because I was so angry. He read it. This is when he met me, I think, 97. And he said... Yeah, you were so angry in that fucking interview, man. I knew you were a good dude. Because <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, it rained. And that's how I got, yeah, yeah, a little bit. And then and then in 97, I did get on five of seven World Cup wow. podiums. I went into the wow. World Cup finals in Caproon second. No way. Number yeah. two plate. I've got it at home. No BS. I'd had a hell of a season. The night before I went to the bar, I ended up hanging out with a chick quite late, shall we say. And I'd had a big crash in practice as well. A big, I had no skin on my body. And I drank till five. And at seven, yeah, I kicked my foot. Big day, Rob. Big day, World Cup finals. Let's get that trophy. And I was like, <laughs> And I raced and came, I think, 55th. Oh, my God. Dropped sixth overall in the World Cup. Oh, no. Yeah, with a bad eight Off over. The podium. And, and they left me there. Oh. I got left in the field. Like oh. the team packed up and didn't this run me back like to the hotel. Movie. They were so disgusted. They drove oh, off. And you know what? I don't blame yeah. them. Yeah, fair enough. It was funny. Yeah. But I, yeah, I blew it massively. But I, to this day, I couldn't care less. Yeah. I, I, like, I had my well, results. You did, yeah, you did care. what you, you came to do. You did the job. I mean, you didn't quite do the job, but you you well, did the job that you wanted to kinda, do. Kind of. And yeah. then that was it really. No, actually, 97... It was really the last year I ever went really fast on a mountain bike. Because I did get all them podiums and I was like, right, I've done yeah, this. I've ticked yeah, that yeah, box yeah. and I'm ready for something else here. But the money's too good. So I'm going to hang around a bit. And I hang around till 2006, man. <laughs> My God, when I quit racing and started commentating. So. Yeah, well, it's funny because we, uh, <laughs> you, earlier in the in the season of, of Just Ride, we were interviewing Brett Reader and we were talking about the transition 
and you you said, yeah, I hung around for 10 years. I did what? <laughs> you hung around for 10 yeah, years. Yeah, that's right. And I didn't yeah, no, really that's believe it. you. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, you know, I'd get the odd result, but not often. And then that was, and then that led And also, your... in that, that state, that part of my career, I did go off the rails. Yeah. Because I was only yeah, there. Right. I was unhappy at I the don't races. I want to know what off the rails is. Drinking, yeah, partying, yeah, no interest yeah, in riding a yeah. bike. But that caught... And that, and the, obviously hanging with Palm and Randy and all this scene we Wait, had, we were big names and we got away with it. Yeah. By, no, we didn't almost... Who came to you and said you should do commentary? How did that happen? So, so in 96, at the first world, 97, excuse me, the first World Cup of the year, I had a tickly cough and I bought some cough medicine. What? No, no, no. Who got you into commentary? Okay. Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Do you mean, all right, let's no. forget that. <laughs> all right, so who got me in a commentary? So in 19... Well, in 96, I might as well just tell this bit. The first World Cup of the year, I had a tickly cough, and on the Saturday, I couldn't deal with it anymore the day before the race. And I was sipping this bottle of cough medicine all day, and by, the, by four o'clock, I'd done the whole thing, and I was hallucinating. And I ended up talking to a fish tank in a restaurant. Martin Whiteley had to come and pull me away from it. He was like, what's going on here? And I was like, I don't feel good. I was, I was, I think I was seeing things. And then the next, and then we, then we parted. I ended up, I had long hair. That night, Kathy Sessler cut my hair to a, to a great These two. are all the team managers. Yeah, team manager man. cut my hair. I was so out of it. And then the next day I was, I drank and I was on my hands and knees and I vomited at the start of the I World Cup. Ten, Didn't one, qualify. Ten. And that was it. I never went back to another World Cup. And then luckily, Red Bull got in touch and said, we want you as a, as to, to co-host. Red Bull X fighters. I'd done a bit of TV stuff as a rider being ah, interviewed, and they, they thought I was all right. No and would I do it with James Cracknell, the Olympic rower? And this is X fighters was the freestyle motocross stuff. Yep, and that's how I got into that. Really? And then at the Madrid party, I met a bloke huh. called Raymond Delu, who was a genius who owned Freecaster, uh -huh. and he at the party, just one of these dudes, he was there watching it, and he goes, "Hey, you're TV presenter," and I was like, "Yeah." thinking I i'm sure blagging am. it yeah and he goes ah i have just bought the mountain bike rights you can uh, you can do it if you want and i was like what do you mean he was like commentary long story short i met a bloke at the airport at the start of 98 to go at the first world cup as a commentator he gets in the car i goes all right mate i ain't got a clue what i'm doing you're a professional tv host commentator and he goes no you are and, I, and raymond like literally i was a co-host with ed lee i didn't know how to front anything yeah, yeah, yeah. so eight pints in i went into that first commentary <laughs> absolutely i was so nervous <laughs> but you say about doing the work yeah, yeah and that work yeah, ethic yeah. i made uh, for that very first world yeah. cup i had a note on each rider yeah. and that was how i so i learned my own way of doing commentary notes my i found my own way into it huh. and i did get help later on yeah, yeah but at yeah. the beginning it was raw it was drunk that it is was loud it was so a mess <laughs> wild yeah. that's so and it was a year wild. later at the end of that first year because i didn't see raymond much he didn't come to the most of the races <laughs> he he found out he said ah, i did not know you were a mountain bike racer and i was like yeah just a bit mate you thought i was a tv host i had no wonder you've wondered why i had no idea what i was doing but the feedback to that first commentary in Slovenia, in Maribor, I said things like, oh, my God, she's a mobile chicane. And, you know, the, the, the one line has started yeah, coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, that, and, it, and it went off. Yeah. And, and that was it. That was the no catalyst way. to me being a commentator. That yeah, that's so how it went. wild. Yeah. Oh, that's so Good wild. Fun, eh? yeah, yeah, that's fun, Yeah, that's super, super and, cool. And now did you then, how did you get into, I can't remember how we started commentating together. <sighs> I remember me and you at the first mountain bike race. We've talked about that. Yep. And then your career Well, okay, so wasn't so long right in downhill. It was it was it was a it was an interesting one because like I I used to race motocross. That's right. So, like, Team both... Green, Kawasaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time in America. He doesn't <laughs> like to talk about it too much, but off air will tell you that he's best mates with Ryan Villapunk, <laughs> James Stewart, okay. you name it, the Duns. Okay. He's raced them all, right? So just okay, get this okay, there. Okay. Elliot is a top flight motor. <laughs> yeah. Racer, or what? When it won't go that far, but <laughs> I feel like my claim to fame dropped out of middle school, dropped out of sixth grade because we, we were we were racing so much. And then, you know, did all my schooling and stuff like that. And then I got into mountain bikes a bit later because I was watching some one of the um, one of the videos. And I was just like, that looks amazing. Like, I want to go and, and do this. I was listening to Freecaster. This was probably 08. And so it was like around that Sam Sam Hill, who was like fastest guy on a mountain oh, bike. Oh, wasn't he? 
He was. He took his brain out to race yeah. at that yeah. moment. In that his is he was a lunatic. A lunatic. Yeah. And he had this amazing run. Like you were commentating, and I was just like, I want to go there. And so, in one year, I was talking to my mom, and I was like, I don't really know what to do. Got my first bike. The way that you get to the World Cups, at least in America, is you need your pro license. And so I went to this race called Sea Otter, kind of big festival. Won, won the race, and I remember a dude Did saying- you? What, the downhill? Yeah, but it was in the expert class, so you needed yeah, like yeah, expert yeah. points to get your pro license. And I remember gotcha. the dude in second was like, man, you're sandbagging a little bit. I was like, <laughs> if I didn't win, you would have won. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so then like got my points, traveled around with my mom to try to get my pro license, or sorry, to get my UCI points. So after you get your, your pro card, you need UCI points to go to the World Cups. And, um, Went around, it was just me and her, you know, I was whatever, 19 or whatever at the time, went to the national championships, qualified fifth, and was like, great, all I need is a top 20, I'm in, crashed in the finals, and I was like devastated, but I had read the rule book like a million times, so I knew like you could get on a national team and wear a national jersey, talk to the commissaire, he was like, ah, like a lot of people want to go to this Wyndham race, the first one in the US in a long time. And I was like, well, what about Italy? Italy, and he's like, well, Italy's next week. I was like, no problem. So flew back, we were in Colorado. I had went with my friends, flew back to California, got my brother and my mom. We flew to Italy, it was my first time out of the country. Had no idea what jet lag was. Like, <laughs> I was like, man, I'm pretty tired. Like, I think I'll just sleep. Woke up like 3 a.m. Me and my brother walked up and down the track like three times because who Just knew? Just wear yourselves out. Yeah, like who knew? <laughs> and uh, we didn't have anything. I brought like a little bag of tools. Like I had a multi-tool, no spare parts because who knew? You didn't, yeah. I mean, right. you why didn't, not? You didn't know you had property, <laughs> really. That's right. And so we had, uh, we had, I would literally like go to the pits, flip my bike upside down behind like the specialized rig or whatever in qualifying. I, I was trying this gap. There was like a gap at the top of the track, cased it, derailleur broke off, chain guide broke off, everything. And I was like, I remember thinking, man, I just flew all the way to Italy yeah. and I'm not going to qualify or whatever. And I was like, you know what? Just like lay off the brakes. And it was about a sole and uh, you don't really need to pedal that much. No, that's right. Yeah. And so I like came down the track qualified 75th or something like Top that so and it was, in, yeah, yeah i was in and it was like a big deal because not that many americans quite like were no to make it the finals as you say and, and at this point in time there was a real there was a real lack of americans right yeah it was, yeah, yeah. It was, there hadn't been any since the heyday of mountain biking right. in the early 90s totally yeah you invented like, it and then disappeared yeah, <laughs> we know it solved it checkbox <laughs> um yeah it was probably literally in that race americans in the final it was me, like Aaron Gwynn, who was one of the best of all time, and maybe two or three others. And so everyone was kind of like, who is this dude or whatever, you know, where'd he come from? And then like did the finals and didn't do much better because I had had the run of my life with no chain. I like, got like 60 something and then ended up getting that Yeti ride the next year. No way. Yeah. And it kind of like all started from there, ended up like, you know, going to a couple of other races that same year. But it's funny, like looking back, because if a kid came up to me and was like, yeah, I don't have my pro license yet, but I'm going to qualify for a World Cup later this year, That's I would right. be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh. But yeah, it's just funny, like naive, like ignorance is bliss, you know? So I ended up, that was like how I got into it. Had like a pretty, pretty good career, like probably could have done better, but I feel like Half of the time, I was kind of like, I just want to travel and have fun. Well, and, yeah, that's right. You know, there is that element, especially when you're younger. Yeah, you know I, mean? I don't know. Totally, totally. The hard thing I think about being a professional to me about being a professional mountain bike rider is like you're only a kid. Yeah, really, like yeah, and all of a sudden, what you've done for fun, yeah, becomes loaded with immense. Pre it oh, becomes for loaded sure. with money. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great. <laughs> But it does become loaded with a lot of pressure. Yeah. And, and that made me desperately unhappy. Actually. <laughs> it did. It was I all right when I was winning, but then once yeah. I was done, the well, pressure, the, it's pressure. I remember the, the I remember the thing that one of the moments that was like good and bad was uh Crankworks, like that mountain bike festival. A bunch of the top riders were there. So like Loic, who we we just had on the show, 
uh, he was there. We had G Atherton, who's a world championship, who's a world champion, Sam Hill, like all these top riders. And I got second. It was my first like big international podium. Walked off the podium and I was like, man, like kind of feel the same as I did before. Like what? Yeah. You know, like what's kind of the thing? And I remember yeah. that was like a weird moment. And it took me like probably a year or so to like figure out why I wanted to do it again. Yeah. And yeah, and, yeah. And after I figured it out, like started doing good, got some top tens, top fifteens and stuff at the World Cups. Um Which is amazing. Yeah, but it was uh yeah, like sports just is so wild. Like you have these amazing high moments and then like these amazing low moments. Like Yeah, yeah, that's right. Isn't that why we do it though? Yeah. The, to me, right, there's nothing comes close. And that's either watching it actually a lot of the time or doing it. Yeah. But nothing brings emotion to me like sport. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Watching sure. people compete or totally. actually doing it myself. Yeah. I don't care. But I, I really love sport. It's funny you say that because like I would have never thought that um, I would feel that emotion on the other side of the tape like no that's right exactly and isn't it bloody nice yeah you do yeah like yeah, to yeah, me yeah, for sure. commentate uh -huh. it's almost a blueprint it's a nicer blueprint actually yeah than when i was racing so you know if you put the days next to each other yeah it starts with that massive pressure yeah you wake up early i must admit as i've done more commentaries and presenting it's the pressures you know it, it's not it's not as intoxicating uh -huh. it's completely overpowering as being a world cup racer that, yeah, that's yeah. a hell of a pressure yeah, yeah. but i don't know but it, it, there's a pressure there yeah. and then and then you know you do your prep so you've done your practice you know and then it's race day yeah you're on yeah, the line yeah, yeah. but you're in a commentary box uh -huh. but you know you've got to respect each one of those riders yeah. you've got to give it the best commentary you can totally and that to release that energy during a commentary and a, you know by the time we get to the top 10 we are flying we yeah. are in tune we're zoned uh -huh. in we aren't we're not thinking we're just talking right yeah, you know what i mean it's like sure. we're going it's it's usually exciting by this point and that is every bit as good as a race run yeah for me. i i totally agree like i think that it it was really interesting that um i that performance of racing like racing downhill doing sport uh, where it's like there's this one moment in time where you have to be on, you know, you come out of the starting gate or whatever. And uh, it took me a couple of years, like what, there was a two year gap, two or three year, two or three year gap before I started commentating. And that exactly what you're describing was the thing that I love so much about it was like, all right, you're live, yeah. you're on, be on. Yeah, and, be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yeah. You know, we get we get twenty shots at being or thirty shots at being good, as opposed yeah. to one when you're racing. I suppose. But yeah. On the other hand, all them thirty, you got to be good. Yeah. But it's funny, isn't it? Totally. It's a, it's a different. It's a different thing, but to me personally, probably more rewarding. I, you know, mountain biking had its challenges to me as I am as a person, and I feel like the way I am lends itself much better to being a commentator. <laughs> I love the research. I love all that shit. It's yeah. much better for me. It's yeah. much better. I like it. I enjoy all the prep. I enjoy the pressure. I enjoy the delivery. Yeah. I enjoy the feeling afterwards when it's been amazing. <laughs> yeah. race, when the race has been amazing, the, the not race, us. Yeah, you know I what know I mean? exactly what you yeah. mean. So, I mean, this year we got to do podcast. Yeah. And I, I will just let everyone know that I had to just – twist your arm oh and everything oh i was like rob we got to do a podcast like we have to do it and then luckily you know red bull came and they were like rob we got to do a podcast what did you think of this what did you think of the podcast this uh <laughs> i loved <them. laughs> I know. can't wait to get in here and do another one <laughs> because there's so much interest in meeting these yeah. people and yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. what i like about yeah. it you know we have a weird way of doing it uh -huh. maybe compared to a lot of people in that yeah like, well, this started because I was so not wanting to do it. <laughs> I wouldn't put any prep in. And I was like, right, I'm just going to turn up then. <laughs> and we actually ran with that approach. And it does work quite well because you do structure it and you do, you find out some stuff. And then I just basically. Well, it's, up. well, you know, yeah. it's, it's, we switch roles for Yeah, this, that's right. right? Like exactly, you, exactly. Which was a conscious thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's funny. It's an interesting it's an interesting one to play the expert because you uh it's good like fun. yeah little late, like it's your job to be curious and it's the other per it's the host's job to kind of move the show along um do you have a favorite guest 
Do you have a favorite moment? Like, oh, who's, or, do you know what? I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna uh, like. It's it's probably just because he's a mega star. Let's be honest. <laughs> but to get to chat to Tom Pitt, yeah, okay. who we who we you know. Well, I you haven't commentated on him actually. Cause no, no. Cause not, but I've commentated him on cross country a yeah, lot. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Some of them right, uh -huh. wins. I never met him. Yeah, and he's British. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he and we've is. got him on the podcast. But the best thing was that. Like on the podcast, it was uh -huh. like talking about doing a bit of downhill. One yeah. of them was like, yeah, you can do downhill. Talk. Yeah, sure. Actually, I think he probably can. Yeah, I think so. Of course too. he can. And then about an hour later, I get a load of Instagram messages of clips of downhill <laughs> from Leger because we decided that Leger was probably the, uh -huh. the nicest one for him to have a go at. And uh -huh. he was like, looks a bit wild. So that, uh, that well, I, I text you, didn't I? Yeah. Like, ah. Tom Pidcock been in touch, has he? Just <laughs> messaged me. Yeah. Smoke, smoke and you on I, that one. I was, ah, here we go. Here I, didn't, we go. I didn't want to say it at the time, but I was pretty jealous that, you know, you now you and Tom Pidcock were just, you know, friends, you know. Top, tight. You know, tight. Tight. And then next thing you know, I'm walking through the airport. Oh. And uh, I see Greg Menard, greatest mountain bike downhill rider of all time. We start chatting. Here comes Tom Pidcock. Wow. And, uh, you know, the three of us sit down. We're talking, whatever. Greg goes to his flight. Me and Tom, we just catch up for about an hour. You didn't no. choke. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure didn't get to you. You ran it. Unbelievable. He's a lovely bloke, he though, he's, man. He's, he's so cool. He's so cool. I love. Uh, I love how he's dry. He's good banter. Mega he's, star. Yeah, he's super cool. Yeah, super super cool. Yeah, I thought. Um, I thought Luke Rowe was also really interesting. Is he your favorite? He was really interesting, wasn't he? He was With that different role. Yeah, in yeah, a, yeah. In yeah. a road team. Totally. Yeah, because. I don't, as as big as the Tour de France is, I don't really know much about it, you know? So to kind of get insider's view of it was super cool. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. It was really, really nice. And I love, I mean, I wouldn't say I know loads about it, but I absolutely do watch it every yeah. year. I adore of it. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. So, yeah. But the guests we've had this year have been, well, thanks to them all. They've been yeah, amazing, they've been all of them. So, absolutely. So, so diverse, so uh -huh. different. Yeah. So, if you could have anyone on, who would it, who would it be? Brian Cox. Who's that? The physicist. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to have a chat? That with would be Kirk? well because I I've think... been working on the Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> you know it's last you decade. know it's funny. So that like you joke, but when we did um, when we did Emily Chappelle, like we that was that was so interesting because she is this academic but also a cyclist, and I think there is a lot of crossover between just cyclists people who bike in general right like it's kind of the premise of the show is like everyone bikes in their own way you can explore so many different ways of riding but i think you'd be surprised like how many people and business people yeah. you know academics just normal people ride a bike well and also you know how many yeah like how many different people from different walks of life a lot of people ride yeah. bikes right i'm gonna throw it out there if you're well known, if you're famous, <laughs> if you're the lead singer at a Foo Fighters, because <laughs> and you ride a mountain bike, just get in touch, just drop me or Elliot a DM, and yeah. uh, we'll arrange it. We'll have you on the next series. We would love to have you. But yeah. it's true, you know, yeah, like yeah. know that a lot of these pop yeah. stars and rock stars and that will go mountain bike. Liam yeah. Gallagher lived not that far from me. No, company. yeah, three or four way. years yeah. ago, we moved just outside of Redden, and his. My mechanic rung me. He was in the bike shop well, buying a mountain bike. And you, I was like, you need to hook this up. Never heard anything. You know, um, you know the band Hoopastank? No. Okay. They're like a, a big rock band in America. I don't, who was that guy you were talking about in the, um, in the UK? Uh, we were just, his music, we were just listening to, you said he's a big pop star. Robbie Williams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Elliot doesn't know. Yeah. Oh my so anyway, God. They're like the that. Lives in our life <laughs> for anonymity. They're like that. And it was so funny. I was out on a mountain bike ride and I was riding up, um, I was riding up. It was like me and a couple friends and talking to this dude and, and, uh, I was like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm in a band. And he was like, yeah, I got to travel a little bit. And I was like, oh, no way. And he's like, yeah, I got to go to Australia and then New Zealand for the tour. I was like, oh, like, no way. Like, <laughs> what, fair what, play. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm the drummer. I was like, oh, like, what band is he? He said, Hoobastank. And oh I was like, God. what? It's like a 
global superstar, no, like, you know right. what I mean? Like yeah, played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we all just riding up the hill together. That's just right. Riding exactly. bikes, you know. So great to get some of those people. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> we don't know who you are. So you got you need to reach out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what is it? Robbie Williams uh, hit us up. Yeah. Yeah, Robbie might. I think his Netflix series would probably see him. In David speed. Beckham as well as I heard is yeah. it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a good series. <laughs> but yeah, no, amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, there we have it. That's uh, the end of season one of Just Ride. A wave, a massive wave of sadness just came over me. I, know. I don't know if I'll get out of here without a tear. Because <laughs> I've loved it. It's been Against sweet. all odds, it's been an amazing series to, you know, to have access to people that normally wouldn't. Oh, yeah. To get to, get to ask these incredible people you know, what makes them tick and yeah. to find out about what they do. I've loved it. I have. And I didn't, like you said, at the start of the series, <laughs> the last thing on earth I wanted to do. <laughs> I know. And I hope that you guys have loved it too. Make sure you hit us up podcast at redbull.com with feedback, suggestions, what yeah. you loved, what you hated, what you want to see. Back. We'll be back in yeah. 2024. We will. Yeah. And all the episodes from this year, all 12 of them are up on redbull.com and, and Red Bull TV. If you want to, watch listen to any of them back but elliot it has been eye-opening uh, it's been awesome it's been yeah it's been podcasting <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in 2024 can't yes, wait we will. thank you very much